Hey everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger, and today we're going to be covering this storm right over here. This is our tropical wave, and it is now just east of the central main development region. And as you can see, we do have now a tomato out here. So we've gone to, from lemon to orange to now tomato. And as you can see, we have a 70% chance of development over the next seven days and a 10% chance that this develops over the next two days. Putting our storm in motion, you can see that we actually have a decent amount of convection. This is honestly more convection than we ever saw with our last wave. So this is definitely a healthier system coming off of the African coast and moving across the central Atlantic. Also, in terms of the United States, we'll also be talking about this low pressure system that is out over in this region. We've got some sneaky little storms that are going to be trying to develop out over into this region, maybe even as far down south as Iowa. So we're going to have a little bit of a tornado threat today. Another little 5% tornado threat. So we have had a little bit of an upgrade. So we're going to be giving you all of the latest updates on that also some thunderstorms back over here in kentucky down into tennessee are possible today as well cooler air is going to be wrapping around this thing and filtering into a lot of these areas as this system continues to track off to the north and east some drier air after that and then another system coming in down the line that might bring some severe weather later but details on that are still iffy so starting off in the atlantic with our tropical wave if we zoom all the way in you can see there's a like and subscribe button all around the storm and then also maybe a hype button as well models are kind of iffy on on this some people might hit that like button some people might hit that subscribe button chances are pretty low for hype button development but you should probably hit it to tell the models that they're wrong but in all seriousness you can see that our wave has a pretty decent amount of moisture kind of pulled up in this area also a lot of dry air is off to its west as well but at least for now it does seem in my opinion that there should be enough moisture here to battle that dry air for a little bit here it really just depends on where our center of load develops if it develops a little bit further back into this region you can see it's going to be surrounded by a lot of moisture and that's going to be helping the storm kind of like the men in black showing up with a briefcase full of guns alien guns that'll help the storm kind of battle this dry air a little bit more effectively but if that doesn't happen this dry air is going to be acting like a vampire basically sucking the life out of our storm as it continues off to the west so still some uncertainty on how this storm is going to battle that and that also shows up onto our models and we'll be looking at that shortly but overall we do have a 70 percent chance of this forming over the next seven days and a 10 percent chance of it developing over the next two days and you can see our latest area of development cone is what this is pretty much is it's got our system going north of the lesser Antilles for now but again things could shift we kind of got a pretty complex atmosphere out here we do have a high pressure system that is back over here a little upper level low that is existing right in this area and then we've also got an ejecting trough out over on the eastern side of the United States right now so a lot of little things could change as we have such a complex kind of background atmosphere around our storm right now but in the time being it's pretty certain that this storm will track either west or west northwest over the next couple of days looking at our atmosphere in the state that it is right now you can see that we do have a 591 line down here this is going to generally keep our storm on that west northwest track pretty much wherever this 590 line goes is kind of where our tropical system is going to meander towards as i push this forward you can see that generally it kind of stays in the same area with a little bit of a weakness developing as our low pressure system kind of rides on its southern side and you can see at least on the eps model at least for now the trend is is that this storm should kind of stay more to the west and every now and then kind of nudge up to the north and east over the next couple of days as there will be subtle weakness here in our high pressure system but you can see that it meanders that high pressure a little bit further off to the west by Wednesday and as I continue to push this forward you can actually see our low pressure system start to develop and you see how this high pressure this 591 line gets angled kind of kind of slanted to the north of our storm our storm is generally going to track along that so that's probably when our northern turn will be most evident and then as we go into Saturday things are getting a little bit more uncertain but generally our models are saying that this 591 line will kind of stick around Around, but then as we get into around Monday on the 22nd our high pressure system starts to kind of fall apart a little bit and then that weakness in the high really allows for this storm to sneak up to the north one of the things that I'm keeping an eye on for though is that a lot of our models have been hinting that we will have this low pressure system right around this time when our storm is really making that northern turn scoot off past the storm if this low pressure system leaves the storm behind and then we see this other high pressure system behind it kind of filter back in depending on where our storm is 
is at this point, it might have a little bit of a wobble to the west. But if this low pressure system comes in at just the right time as our storm is lifting off to the north, it will most likely capture our storm and sling it off to the north and east. So there's our uncertainty and you'll be able to see it a little bit better as we come over to the tracks. But before we do that, I do want to come over to some of our deterministic models here. After comparing and contrasting these models to what we are seeing on satellite, I really do feel like the Euro has a better handle on this storm. The GFS, in my opinion, just has too much moisture out in front of our storm. And this is a way better depiction. If we look at where these browns are right now and then we come back over to our water vapor imagery you can see that all of these really orangey colors here out in front of our storm should translate into browns on our humidity map if you kind of focus in on that shape there and then come back over to the euro you can see that it's kind of got that very similar shape and intensity of that drier air so definitely thinking the euro model has a better handle on our storm right now and yeah pretty much from now all the way until it gets close to the caribbean you can see that our storm is going to be battling that dry air now if this again what happened last time with our last wave is that this is kind of what it looked like we had the gfs thing a little bit more moisture the euro was a little bit less bullish on that and then as the models developed developed the dry air got a little bit more intense and a little bit more intense than the previous runs and then that ended up completely choking our system off so again this pretty much whole forecast is assuming that our storm is going to efficiently battle this dry air like our models are saying and then we will have this storm try to develop as we go into around the 18th here but yeah you can see pretty much to the 18th 19th 20th it's going to be battling the dry air quite a lot and if it kind of falls apart over here to the east of the Caribbean we're not going to see this storm develop and in fact we will see these storms disappear on the models but you can see if it can last long enough and battle that dry air long enough to make it north of the Caribbean or maybe south you know into the Caribbean you know again this is around 156 hours out our ensembles are pretty certain on the track at this point but always got to keep an eye on some subtle model shifts in the future yeah if it can survive that it will likely strengthen as it takes a little bit more of a northwest north turn now as of right now the euro is indicating that this low pressure this approaching trough kind of grabs our system here and also weakness in between these two high pressure systems allow the storm to move up to the north and that trough hits it and pushes it more to the east according to the euro but again what we're going to be watching for is this high pressure system that ejects from behind this low pressure system as we're around in the 21st and if there isn't really anything to kind of butt up against that high pressure system or there are a little bit weaker systems that might be hitting around this area a little bit longer and we could see it a little bit more of an eastern track sorry a western track out of this storm so those are the things we are keeping an eye on but yeah dry air definitely got to watch that and how the storm is interacting with it if it develops here shortly it's going to battle that dry air more effectively but if it can continues to stay kind of a disorganized system and the dry air is not forecast as, as well as yet fall apart and looking at our potential future track with this storm you can see that we still have a pretty stout signal here on the euro of development here in the short term and in fact you see a lot of our model members here are pretty darn close all these little numbers are a different model run and as you can see all these model runs that have gone at the same time here with just a little bit tweaked parameters to give an average you can see that they're pretty much all saying the same thing that this storm is going to be somewhere in this area about three days from now and we could already have a tropical depression by that point and then as i continue to push this into the future to around the 18th 19th you can see that generally most of the ensemble members agree on a northern turn now the big question mark is does this take a west turn after that you can see that by the time we get to the 23rd or about 222 hours from now you can see our models are pretty split we have a lot of models coming out over here way out to sea we have a decent amount of models that are north of the Caribbean but a lot further to the south and west indicating maybe a little bit of a stronger higher pressure system kind of nudging our storm to the west but generally we do have a pretty good agreement at least on our initial northern turn so that's why the track has been updated and that's why we kind of have a new track from the national hurricane center now if we come over here to the gefs ensemble we also have a, a pretty similar signal but one of the things i want to note is that the gefs model is a little bit further to the south with a lot of its members you see on our last run it was a little bit further up to the north if I come back over to here you can definitely see that we've had a subtle shift to the south that also shows up on the EPS but not as drastically so that could just be that our models are agreeing a little bit more on a further south track so it appears like it make a made a big shift I mean that's a pretty si significant shift but the good news is if I continue to push this forward you can see that that uncertainty is also in the GEFS model you can also see that it doesn't bring any members into the Caribbean but you can see that a lot of these members start to spread out again as we get into around the 23rd but yeah 
a lot of mo member models in an area that would definitely bring maybe some concerns to the United States. But again, we're still 210 hours out. And then we have a lot of members out over here that are like just basically going to be completely fish storm. You push this out, you can see that almost all of these recurve off to the north and east. So definitely still a lot to watch for. If we get any more shifts and so that high pressure system just kind of sticks around for a little bit longer, we're definitely going to see this thing go more west. If there's no weakness in the high as it comes off over to here, we're going to definitely see it go more west. So pretty much, unfortunately, at this point, it's impossible to completely rule out United States impacts. But yeah, that's the latest on a tropical wave in the tropics. Now coming back over to the United States with this low pressure system right here, essentially what's happening is we have a pretty large digging trough of upper level winds and it's gonna be kind of ejecting uh, into this region and then potentially could have a little bit of a pseudo warm front up here, also tracking up to the north where there will be increased vorticity. And in fact, it is this pseudo warm front that is going to be causing the worst portion of our tornado threat, but there is also a sneaky tornado threat developing over here on the border of Nebraska and I I don't think the models have been agreeing on for very long, so it might not be happening as the models are saying right now, but definitely something to keep an eye on. But essentially, the upper level air is kind of coming in here. It's spreading apart. There's a little bit of a void that's going to develop back down here, which is going to allow for some severe weather to rise. The warm front up here is going to cause some forcing as well, allowing some storms to rise as well. And we're going to have some lower level shear coming out of the south and that upper level shear going over it. It's going to bring the perfect conditions for some severe weather and maybe even a couple of tornadoes now if we come over here to our latest HRRR model run you can see that initially at around 2 p.m not a whole lot's going on but as we move further out into the future some interesting things start to develop especially up here to the north we have a little pseudo warm front up here a couple of storms firing off in this area we come over to our 850 millibar winds you can see that there are some decent lower level winds to that and they're going to be turning with height as it's pretty close to that surface low and we also have that trough kind of the northern side of our trough ejecting in this area and that's going to be one allowing for those winds to turn all the way up in the atmosphere and also cause some forcing which again creates that void and what fills in that void is the storms in terms of storm relative velocity you can see those storms that could fire near that surface low which is back here is going to have a lot of spin energy there and not only could we get a tornado we might even get like a long lasting tornado if the storm can get situated just right and not really have a lot of mergers around it but i do think a couple of tornadoes are going to be possible up here the environment is definitely favorable for that but if you look at the SPC outlook and you look at the tornado threat you would think maybe uh these storms back over here could be a threat or maybe uh these storms back over here and they could there is going to be a little bit of a tornado threat down here and a definitely a more elevated tornado threat up there but as you can see over by these storms over here near Iowa and Nebraska there is no tornado threat but I do believe these storms over here that fire near Omaha Sioux City Vermilion and Sioux Falls could pose a a tornado threat now if we look at our lower level winds you can see that they are going to be around 20 to 30 knots so we're not talking about super strong or large tornadoes but we're definitely talking about enough forcing to cause those storms enough spin in the atmosphere as well if we come over to our storm relative velocity you can also see there's going to be some decent spin in this area too looking at our surface based cape you can also tell we're sitting around one to two thousand joules per kilogram now albeit this is a new signal one that really hasn't popped up on any of our models before so should, we should probably be taking it with at least a little bit of a grain of salt but if you live in omaha over there near denison iowa north of fall cities and near sioux city i'd be keeping a close eye on these storms definitely a severe threat associated with them and also could see a couple of tornadoes out of these guys so keep your eye on it but yeah these storms over here on the nebraska iowa border really don't last for more than a couple of hours then we have a damaging wind threat by the time we get to around 8 p.m and then also up here looks like the storms are going to be getting started in North Dakota at around 5 or 6 p.m. Again, if there's a lot of convection and mergers, it's kind of like one of those fine line events where things could definitely fall apart or or maybe not. Maybe these storms do get organized and we actually do see a couple of tornadoes. Can't even rule out a regional outbreak here, given the environmental parameters. Now, again, I don't think there's going to be some super strong tornadoes today. We're not really talking about that kind of sheer environment, but there's going to be a lot of vorticity and it wouldn't overly surprise me if we we got maybe one strong tornado today but again pretty conditional day so probably not going to get a hatched 10 percent region or anything out here and as i push this forward you can see these storms really start to fall apart as we go into the overnight hours and then as we come into the next day you can see that our low pressure system ejects all the way further up to the north that allows for less forcing we're not going to have much of upper level winds really at all to cause too many storms but some thunderstorms could be possible over here near 
Minnesota going into Missouri, Mississippi, and then also on the backside of the storm where there will be some moisture over there in Montana and Wyoming. Now, looking at uh, the long-term future for the United States, you can see that trough's going to get out of our hair. We could potentially have another trough try to work its way back in, but it looks like that signal is slowly fading here on the GFS, so definitely a downtrend. Maybe not as much of a severe weather threat. Could still get a little bit of a cold front, though, move through, and maybe some thunderstorms activity, but uh, generally over the next couple of days, this is going to be like the only drop in the area that could cause some severe weather. And you can see it's a pretty weak and meandering drop, and that's definitely going to bring some cooler air. If we come over here, you can see that there is some upper level winds as we go into the 18th. Not too much of a lower level wind environment. And our surface based instability is going to be kind of there, but with not a whole lot of forcing from those upper level winds, we might not see too much other than just some general thunderstorms out here and you can see it's kind of what the gfs is saying at this moment now in terms of where the moisture is going to be in humidity you can see that we're still going to be battling some drier and moist air the moist air is really going to be like right over here near minnesota going all the way down into like arkansas and parts of the southeast still relatively dry in the ohio valley in the northeast and really dry back over here in the western united states and that dry air over there in the western united states is going to try to eject but if that next trough that comes in isn't really that powerful that cold front that we were talking Talking about that could come through here might struggle to do that you can see we just have a lot of moisture lingering here over the next pretty much week or so in the central united states because there really isn't much air or much moving air to kind of move that around so really anywhere from texas all the way up into the ozarks are definitely going to feel a little bit more humid over the next week so with that humidity in mind we're also going to look at our temperatures as well you can see kind of right in that little battle zone where that storm is going to be happening lifting off to the north and to the east of that we're going to be seeing an ejection of some warmer air all the way from the southeast up into minnesota and remember that's where that moisture is going to be hanging out so it could be a little bit muggy out there as well so again 80s and 90s and maybe possibly a couple pockets of 100 degree temperatures over there into illinois and as i push this forward in the next day that he's just basically going to stick around there i mean we're not going to really have much of anything no storms really to come in or cold fronts to really come in and kind of clear that out maybe a little bit uh here Showing up on the GFS as we get into the 18th, could have a little bit of some dry air and cold air. Try to sneak into Missouri, parts of Oklahoma and Kansas, bringing those temperatures and humidities down. And that might even sink all the way down into like Missouri and Arkansas as we get into the 19th and then into the 20th, maybe some possibility of it coming as far east as Illinois. So some question marks there again, but still, I mean, some drier and cooler conditions could potentially come back for some folks. But again, let's check out those dew points at around this time. Yeah, there's still some 60 degree dew points out there. So it's still going to feel a little bit muggy. But yeah, everyone, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much again for watching and continuing to support the channel. And I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.